Code Explain says hi. So after today's part, the user will be able to check a to do when it's completed. And also he can uncheck a to do. You can see here that the number of to do's in my project personal changes when a to do is checked. So if I check this to do, it says that there's no left to do's in my personal project. Also, we can go and uh, repeat a to do. So when a to do is checked, and this icon will show up. If you click on this icon here, it will repeat this to do next day uh, with the same text, the same time and the same project. So if I click on it, now you can see that the to do here has been added to the next day with the same time here and everything else. So let's go and see the logic behind this. So to check a to do is just updating a document is just updating our to do in our Firestore database. So the field we want to update now is the checked field. So because our to do has a property called checked, we're going to go and update that property. So uh, when the user clicks on this icon here, we go and show this icon. If he clicks on this one again, we go and show back this icon here. And the GSX that is responsible to render these icons here is in our uh, folder components and uh, my to do.js. So there we have a dev with the class name check to do, and we have here some conditional rendering. So F to do that checked, we show this circle here, this one here. If it's not, we show an empty circle with a what to do that color. So here I'm going to go and add an unclick event. So when the user clicks on this icons here, I'm going to go and run a function called check to do. And this is going to take in our to do object. So our to do object has these properties, as we all know. And also it has a property called ID, which is the ID of the document. So this to do here has a property called checked color day day project text time and also ID, which is set to the document ID here. So to update our document here or our to do, we need to import Firebase first into our to do.js file. And then we need to create our function check to do. It takes in our to do object. So the first thing we need to do is to create a reference to our doc. So I'm going to go and say Firebase that Firestore the collection to do's and then dot doc. So we need this ID here. So it's just the to do dot ID. Now that I have a reference to my doc, I can go and use the update method. The update method takes in an object because my document is just an object. And then the fields you want to update. In our case, it's going to be checked. Now checked is going to be equal to when this is set to false. If I click on this, we set that to uh, true. If it's true and I click on it, we set that back to false. So checked here is just going to be set to not to do that check. So if it was false, it's now going to be true. If it was true, it's now going to be false. Now let's go and see this in action. Again, we need first to get the part 21, the last part uh, files or the folder. I'm going to paste the link to that folder into down get. Once you download the folder, run npm installed from within that folder and then you're good to go. Now I'm going to go and create a new to do. I'm going to call it test to my personal project. And if I click on this, you can see how we can't check that to do. So we need to go through the components folder into my to do component. And then I'm going to go into this dev with the class name check to do. And I'm going to add an unclick event. And it's going to be uh, calling a function called check to do that takes in the to do object. So let's go and create the function const check to do. Uh, to, it takes in the to do as an argument. Then I'm going to say Firebase, that Firestore. So I'm creating uh, a reference to my doc, to my to do. The doc here, it's going to be to do that ID or the doc ID. Uh, the update method takes in the object and we need to update the checked field and set it to not to do that checked. Now I'm going to save this and if I go and click on that button, now you can see how we check and uncheck our to do. And now you can see here that the number of to do's for our personal project didn't show up. 
So we have a to do in our personal project. So we need to show the number one here. Our app didn't show that number because we have an issue there, which we need to fix. So let's go and see why that issue is happening and let's fix it. So we have seen that we have an issue there in our project status text or the number of to do's for each project. Why? So I'm going to go and take a look into my hooks and then my index.js where I have all the hooks. So my use to do's hook, use filter to do's and use projects custom hooks. So when we get our to do's from our Firestore database, we pass them as an argument to my use projects hooks and then using this function here, calculate number of to do's, my use projects uh, calculate the number of to do's. But there is something wrong here. What's wrong about this is when we call the function use projects, uh, we make a call to our Firestore database and then we get back our projects. And when we call our use to do's, we make a call and then get our to do's array. Now we have uh, two cases. So if we get the to do's first, and then we pass them to our use project, and then get the project, then the number of to do's will be calculated just fine. But in the other hand, if we get the project first, and then we didn't get yet the to do's because this is a synchronous code. Then we run our function here. The to do's is empty and it's going to return zero or undefined for all the number of to do's of all the projects. Uh, so we don't get to calculate the number of to do's and that's why we don't see the number of to do's in our uh, app. And then when we get our to do's from our database, we don't go and rerun our use projects uh, hook. Uh, so we don't recalculate the number of to do's. So we don't see any changes or any uh, updates in our app uh, for our for the number of to do's of each project. So what we need here to do is that we need to uh, calculate or recalculate the number of to do's whenever my to do's or my projects has been changed. So here what I'm going to do first is I'm not going to go anymore and calculate the number of to do's inside my US projects custom hook. So I'm going to get rid of this logic here of this function here. And I'm going to go and create a new, uh, a new custom hook. So the job of my use to do's here is going to be just listening for the changes in my database and get the to do's. And it's going to be the same job for my use projects. It's just going to be uh, listening to the changes in my database and get my projects. And now to calculate the number of to do's, I'm going to go and create a new custom hook called use projects with stats. And this is going to take in the to do's and the project. So whenever my to do's or my project has been changed, I'm going to go and rerun my use projects with stats. And that's going to recalculate the number of to do's for each project. So let's go and update our use projects hook. So I'm going to go and get rid of this function here then I don't need to pass in the to do's anymore. And also I'm going to get rid of this property number of to do's. So now my use projects will return an array called projects and that array has elements. Those elements are objects. They have two properties, an ID and the name of the project. I can also take this line of code here and paste it here. I don't want to type in this line anymore. Now let's go and talk about our use projects with stats custom hub. So inside our index.js, I'm going to create a function and I'm going to go and export it. This function here takes in the projects and to do do's we have got from our uh, database. Now at the end here, we're going to return the projects with stats. So we're going to go and return all the projects we have got from the database but we're going to add a new property uh, called number of to do's. So that's why we say here projects with stats. So the projects here is an array with uh, elements that are objects with two properties, ID and name. And now we're going to add another property uh, called number of to do's. So 
here because I need to remember the projects with stats this means I'm gonna go and create some state and I'm gonna initialize it with an empty array and then I'm gonna use my use effect and then I'm gonna run this effect only if the projects and my to do's have been changed that's why I need to use effect hook because I need to recalculate the number of to do's in each project only if the projects and the to do's has been changed now I'm gonna go and map over my projects array so I'm gonna go for each project and calculate or recalculate the number of to do's in, in, in that project so for each project I'm gonna go and return an object so this is an object the properties of this object will be the old project properties which are the ID and the name so I'm just spreading the object project and I'm gonna add to it a new property called number of to do's so now I'm returning an object with three properties the number of to do's the ID of the project and its name to calculate the number of to do's we've seen this before so I'm gonna go and filter all the to do's that uh, their project name is the same as project name so if the project that name is personal then I'm gonna filter all the to do's that their project name is personal and also I need just the to do's that are not checked so if it to do as checked I'm not gonna take that into consideration so now my filter method here will turn an array with all the to do's that verifies this condition if uh, that array has three to do's means that the project has uh, three to do's for the number of to do's so I'm just gonna say you that length and that that length will be the number of to do's in that array which is gonna be the number of to do's for that project now the map method here will turn an array and I'm gonna set that array to a const called data now that array is gonna be uh, an array of objects each object is a project and each project has three properties the number of to do's the ID and the name and here at the end I'm gonna set projects with stats to the data so that's it for our use projects with stats now let's go and see this in action so let's go and open our text editor I'm gonna go into my uh, into my hooks folder then into our index.js file we need to update our use projects hooks we need to get rid of all of these I'm gonna go and cut this remove this line remove this property here and I'm gonna set this to doc.data.name now we're good now let's go and create our custom hook our function use projects with stats this is this gonna take in the projects and the to do's I'm gonna create some states so the projects with stats and set projects with stats I'm gonna use state here and I'm gonna set it to an empty uh, array I'm gonna use effect here to calculate the number of to do's and this will rerun only if the projects and to do's has been changed I'm gonna map over my projects array and then for each project I'm gonna go and return an object an object with the number of to do's property which is the to do's that filter and we need to filter all the to do's that the project name is the same as our project name that name so here we have a typo I need to say project not project and also I need to filter the project or the to do's that they are not checked and I'm gonna say that length for the number of to do's then I'm gonna spread my project here I need to add a comma here and now I'm gonna set the data uh, to my projects with stats and then at the end I will need to return the projects with stats and that's it now let's go to our context so to pass down 
the projects with stats instead of our projects. So I'm going to get the projects with stats using our uh, custom hook, use projects with stats. We need to bring that first. This takes in the projects and the to-dos we get from our database. Now, instead of sending down the projects, we need to send down the projects with stats. Now, if I go and check this, I'm going to go and refresh. Now, you can see that the number of to-dos is one for our personal project. If I check that, you can see that it says zero. Now, I'm going to add a new one to work project. You can see it says one. I'm going to add another one to the same project work. Now, you can see it says to do. If I go and check them, the number of to-dos is changed which means that everything is working just fine. Now I'm going to go to next seven days and check this. If I click on this icon here, you can see that it didn't repeat our to do, which means we need to go and talk first about the logic behind repeating a to do and get back here. Now let's go and talk about the logic behind repeating a to do. So we have a to do when we check that to do, then this icon shows up. When I click on that, we repeat that to do the next day. So the text of the do uh, remains unchanged, the time, the project, the color, etc. We need to add an unclick event to this icon here. So the JSX that is responsible to render this as a dev with the class name add to do next day. And we have some conditional rendering here. So we're going to add an unclick event to that dev and we run a function called repeat next day, which takes in the to do this old to do here. And from that old to do, we're going to get this new to do here, or we are going to add a new to do from that one. The old to do here has these properties. The check is set to true and all the other uh, properties and also an ID. So this to do here has an ID, which is the ID of the document in our Firestore database. Now for our repeat next day is going to take in my to do object. Then I'm going to go and create next day date. So we need to get the next day date from this date here. So I'm going to go and say to do that date and its format is month, day and year, as you can see here, month, day, year. I need to pass this into uh, a JavaScript date object. So I'm going to use moment. Now I'm going to pass this string into a JavaScript date object. And then I'm going to use a, uh, a method by moment called add. And I'm going to add one day to this date here. So that's how I'm going to get the next day date of the repeated to do. And then I'm going to go and create my repeated to do. It's going to be just an object. This repeated to do properties are going to be just the same as my to do uh, as my old to do properties. So I'm just going to go and spread my to do object. Now the repeated to do has all these properties inside of it and also the ID. So here the checked is set to true and we need to set it back to false. So we're going to override the checked uh, property and I'm going to say checked false. Now we need to override also the date property. I'm going to go and say date is a uh, next day date, but we need to format it to this string here format. And we're going to do the same thing for day. So we need to say next day, day that format to this string format here. So now our repeated to do here will have all the properties of our old to do. And then we're going to override this, just these three uh, properties. And now I'm going to go and do a very important step, which is deleting the property ID. So I don't want to stick with the old ID of my old to do. Because if you remember, React will throw an error when you have two children with the same key, because the ID is the key of these two children here. So what I'm going to do here is removing that ID. And then when we call the add function to add a new document to our Firebase or our Firestore database, 
this will generate a new ID for our new to do. And here I'm just gonna pass in the repeated to do. And that's it. Now let's go and see this in action. So I need to go into my to do.js component and then go to the dev with the class name at the next day. I'm gonna add an onclick event and an onclick, I'm gonna run a function called uh, repeat next day and it takes in the to do object as argument. Now I'm gonna go here and create that function const repeat next day takes in the to do and then the first thing I'm gonna do is create the next day date object from our repeated to do. So I'm gonna use moment, we need to print that first. I'm gonna pass in to do that date and its format to pass it into a JavaScript date object and then I can use the add method. I'm gonna add a one day to that date. Now I'm gonna create the repeated to do object and it's gonna have all the properties of our old to do. We need to override the checked and set it to false. We need to override date and set the next day date and we need to format that to month, day, year. We also need to uh, to override the day and format it. Then we need to delete the ID property and then we need to add our repeated to do to our Firestore database. So I'm gonna use the add method here and I'm gonna pass in the repeated to do. Now I'm gonna save, let's go and check if this works. So I'm gonna go and click on repeat so it's repeated but I can't check it and I can't also remove it which means we have an issue there. So if I repeat this and click on check, we can't check those. Now let's go and fix the problem. So we have a typo here. We need to say repeat, repeat it to do, not repeat next day. Now I'm gonna save. I'm gonna go back and see if this works now. I'm gonna refresh. So if I click on next seven days and repeat this to do, if I go and check this, you can see that now it's working. Now let's go to our database. I want to clear my to-dos collection. I'm just gonna remove my collection to-dos because those to-dos I can't remove because they have the same ID. That's why we needed to delete the IDs. Now let's go and check if this works. I'm gonna add and repeat or repeat the to-dos. So you can see that it's working just fine. Now, if I repeat this so many times, you can see that the to-dos go beyond our uh, our dev. So that's a CSS issue. So I'm gonna go into my app that CSS and then into my to-dos component or to-dos with a capitalized T. I'm gonna add a property overflow Y and set it to auto. Now, if I save, now you can see the scroll bar there. So uh, everything's working. I hope you enjoyed uh, this today's part. So take care and see you in the next one.